Okay, everyone, this is uh, just a video that I wanted to uh, create for you guys because we missed our class on Friday. Uh, your voiceover assignment uh, for your beats is going to be due on Friday, February 12th. So I just wanted to put together a little video on how to put together your footage. So you can see already with my project, I've got some footage already loaded into uh, my system here. You guys would just load that in as you would normally do um, from your phones on your from your cameras on your phones whatever camera that you're using so you guys have uh, done that already from first semester for some of the different projects that you did then once your footage is in the system just a reminder you're going to have to go up under file and you're going to create a sequence that you can put your uh, voiceover together on so just for uh, for this particular exercise, we're going to be using some other sequence settings when we're starting to use the bigger cameras like the X200. For this one, you could just go with the ABCHD one that we were using in first semester. So again, that would be under the 1080i, and then you would be choosing the ABCHD 1080i 3060i, right? Uh, and just hit OK, and that's going to create a sequence for you. When you start to lay your footage down, it may ask for an error message to use existing settings. Just go ahead and use the existing settings, right? So this is just a situation where sometimes we have footage, and again, I don't know what cameras you guys are using for some of your footage for this, but they might not match the sequence settings. And if you just use the sequence settings that you've created from the ABCHD, it'll correct and fit it into that situation for you. Um, so I'm just going to go through the footage here um, and just start to build a voiceover. So this is just some raw footage of uh, some students on campus. Um, so let's just say this was, you know, um, kind of a uh, voiceover that was uh, based on post-secondary education. So we're just kind of putting some uh, footage together that way, kind of creating some sequences and doing different things that way. So I'm just going to scroll through the footage here. We just got a shot of somebody sitting at a desk, some people working with a camera behind. All right, so I'm just going to scroll through here. He pulls out his phone, so that's a nice little action. So let me just start it here. I'm going to put an in point there. Just going to let it go. It takes forever to send. Pulls out his phone. Looks at it a little bit. That's probably more than enough, so I'm going to put an out point there. Now, guys, what I would recommend for this one, remember the voiceover. It's called the voiceover, but you guys will not be voicing anything to these. You'll be supplying the voice later on in your field news update. You'll also be using this in your studio news updates. So you'll be supplying those voices live or live to tape when we're taping these different elements. I'm going to want you guys to be putting all of your voiceover material because there is no actual voiceover. You're going to be putting it onto the video one track, and you're also going to want to put it onto the audio two track. So remember, we talked about it last semester. These two icons here one says V1, one says A1. These are kind of your routing switches. So when you select them and put them beside the track that you want to place a particular edit to, it'll automatically go to that track. So we obviously want to be on the video one track, so we want V1 beside V1 here. But we're going to take this A1 and not put it beside A1. We're going to put it beside A2 because that's where we want the audio to go from this particular raw shot. We want it to go onto A2. Every NAT sound element that you have in any edited element that you're going to be doing moving forward will always be on channel two. Only channel one will be for, you know, the actual voiceover that you might record for a story, the interview clips, the stand-ups, all of these different kind of things. Everything else that's really B-roll will always go on audio two, right? And remember, guys, you have these two buttons up here. You have insert and you have overwrite. Since you're just building a voiceover, you're just going to keep inserting these shots one after another. All right, so I'm just going to insert this shot. It'll go right to video one and A2 because that's where I place the V1 beside V1 and the A1 beside A2. So when I hit insert, boom, it puts it on those designed tracks. Okay. Now I can go into shot two, and I know my shooter has created a bit of a sequence here. So you can see that he's working on the phone here. So let me just kind of zoom in. Remember, you can use this dial here at the bottom, these bars at the bottom, to kind of zoom in. And let's just find something. So his hands are on the kind of moving around. There's his thumb. 
So right about there. So I am going to put an endpoint on my timeline because that's where I want my next shot to go. So I'm going to put an endpoint here, right? And I'm going to come up here, and his thumb is down below here, so that's going to match that action. I'm going to put an endpoint here, and I'm just going to use this shot for a couple of seconds. Boom, more than enough. All right, and now because I have an endpoint down here, I'm not going to insert. Because as soon as I insert, if I insert, what happens is it's going to split that shot into two and put this shot in between, like this. See how it made this shot? Right there it is there. We got the second shot, then it goes back to him. Okay? We don't want it to be that way. In this scenario, we want to replace where we have the mark in down here. And so we're going to use the overwrite tool. The overwrite tool will take the shot and replace whatever's on the timeline based on our mark in. So I'm just going to hit overwrite and I'm building a voiceover. And you can see over here, this is my running time. All right, so I was at zero, I'm at nine seconds now. I'm gonna go back into my raw footage, see what else we have. We got a close up of him. All right, so let's put a couple of seconds of this close up in. All right, let's make sure that person's behind him a little bit. Let's just go one, two, more than enough, All right? And because this shot is already at the end of the previous shots, I can just go insert. Right? The only time you really want to do overwrite is when you're replacing something. So if your shot is at the end of the uh, previous shot on your timeline, just do a simple insert. Right? And if we go back here, we got a nice little sequence going of post-secondary life on campus. So he's pulling out his phone, he's looking at it. Boom, he's still looking at it. We got a nice little cutaway. We got a nice little sequence on things. Okay. So I'm just going to zoom in. I want to make sure I'm placing this at the end of the previous shot. Because, um, again, this is post-secondary life, so we don't want to always be in the same area. Let's see what else we've got. Go through the footage. Okay, there we go. we got some stuff at the campus here. It's not a bad shot, but I want to get some people doing some things, so I'm just scanning through. Uh, that's not a horrible shot, so let's see. If we start with the sign, Shaping Horizons, put a mark in there. Get some people walking by the building. Remember that it kind of animates wow. things. Yes. So I'll kind of stop it right about there once he leaves the frame. And I'm just going to insert that at the end. I'm just kind of building this 30-second voiceover. Okay, so we got some shots of people coming out or walking into a... There we go. I love this shot of people walking into Heritage Hall. So let's do our mark in here. I seen the reflection of them in the parking garage. Do our mark out. So guys, we're getting all these spontaneous people walking right about there. Okay. Now, you'll you'll hear that people are talking behind the camera. Hopefully, you guys aren't talking behind the camera because again, we want to use that NAT sound. I can use this shot, but I may want to replace it with some different NAT sound later on. But I'm just going to insert this one at the end of the previous one. Right, and I can see my time is here, so I'm at 27. I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to find a six shot to kind of end this. Let's see what we have here. We've got some people walking in on the steps. Some more shots of people walking in on the steps. Not a big fan of those. Let's scroll down. What else we got? Oh, we got some C train stuff. Let's see if we can get a nice C train shot. Well, here, actually, let's get a nice little cutaway because we got some nice sound probably. There we go. We got some nice bells ringing. So, and again, this is all showing post secondary life. This is perfectly fine. So, I'm going to grab this shot. Just take a couple of seconds of it. I'm going to insert that at the end of the previous one. All right, and I am just going to, yeah, that works pretty good. And now I'm just going to grab a shot of a C train going by. Let's see what we got. There we go. I love the shot of the C train going by. Let's use that. Now, guys, because this is going to be our last shot, because based over here, I'm looking for about a 30-second voiceover. 
So whatever our last shot is, we always want to start it a couple of seconds before. So what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to show you a little trick here, because this is kind of ending right at 29, 21. That's a little too soon. This shot here is a little long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick here. I am going to find the endpoint of this shot, put a mark in here, go a couple of seconds in and maybe pick it up right about there. And over here, guys, I've got this extract. Lift will lift it away and just leave an empty space. Extract is going to take that mark in and mark out on my timeline and move it down. Lift it away and move it down. Boom, there we go. Because now the bells come in at 28, which is perfect, because now I can take this shot of the train coming in. I'm actually gonna start it once the train is in, like right about there. Let that go. Okay, so I'm going to put a mark out and I'm going to insert that at the end of the previous shot. There we go. So you can see we've gone to 36 total, which is great. We want a 30 second voiceover, which means when we're doing in the show, this is 30 seconds right about here, right? So this is where the studio is going to cut back to you guys who are going to be in the studio in front of a green screen delivering as an anchor. You're going to be talking over this voiceover, okay? Whenever we do something that's going to be going into a show, like a 30-second voiceover like this, we always cut it to an extra five seconds. So whatever the last shot, and this one started about 28 seconds in, whatever the last shot is, we let that go for an extra five seconds without sound. So guys, what we want to do is we want to lock off the video track. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our trim bar. And we're going to trim this way in. right? Because what happens now, and you can see there's a little leftover video, which I'll show you how to get rid of in a second. Uh, I'm going to unlock this track here. What we have is our voiceover with not sound. But then, if we have to stay on the shot, it goes to silence. Right? Your pad, that's called video pad. Video pad should always be at the end of an edited item. Whether it's a news package, whether it's a voiceover throw to clip, whether it's just a plain voiceover like you're doing for your beats, we always have our cut to our total time, which would be a total of 30 seconds, and then we extend the last shot by an extra five seconds, without any sound, okay? And that just allows us to keep the shot up if something goes wrong while we're doing the live broadcast, right? This pad is just kind of a safety net in case something goes wrong, right? Now you'll notice if I come over to the end here and I zoom in, you're gonna see that there's a little bit of an extra shot here at the end. All I have to do is just take my mouse, highlight it, hit the delete key, boom, it's gone. Right, so that was just an extra frame of video uh, based on where I put in the endpoint for the last shot. So now if I play this, I've got a nice 30 second voiceover of student life on a post-secondary campus. Now, you're asking yourselves, where's the voiceover go? Again, the voiceover is done live in the studio by the anchor when we play this. So you guys would not supply any voice to this. You would just be cutting your pictures together. Typically a 30 second voiceover is going to be anywhere from six to nine shots. Um, we've got a total of, so there's the end of our 30 seconds. That's probably where we're going to cut back. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're right in the average length of that. Okay. Now, what you should also be looking for here, guys, is your view meter over here. All right, so because this is a voiceover and it's gonna be going live into a program, our responsibility is to kind of mix it down to a background level. So remember to do your mixing, you have to click on this wrench icon over here, and then you would hit expand all tracks. And remember, if I scroll down to audio track number two here, right, 
as there we go you can see there's a white line on each of these shots all you've got to do is just bring that white line for each shot and bring it down slightly I'm gonna bring it down to like minus not 33 let's try it minus 14 so I'm gonna bring them all around minus 14 again this could be different from shot to shot because not all sound is exactly the same all right but I can see this has a fairly large waveform for each one of these so I'm gonna bring them down to about 1435 and again you just got to do this with every individual shot you can see the DBs going down there so you can get to the target that you're looking for and I'm gonna do this last one here second last one and this one Right about there so now when I play this I should have some nice kind of sound hopefully peaking around you know minus 20 uh, or sorry minus uh, 30 35 let's just listen to it there. you can see it it's peaking around minus 30 which is good we still hear it it's still present now some sounds are gonna sound a little bit louder than others like he's in a quiet room we got a little bit of sound outside. You can hear people talking in the background. It's fine. We're just getting that gnat sound from the shot. Now, when the bells come in, that should come in pretty loud. You can hear them. Perfect. All right. So you're just bringing your sound to a background level. Now, I would warn you guys that every shot is going to be different. Right? Not every sound is going to be at the exact same level. You just got to listen with your ears. So again, that's why I always say, you know, listen on the speakers of your laptop. They're going to give you a little bit better representation of what your audio level should be. Okay. Now, I should collapse this for a moment because I just want to demonstrate something to you guys. Because depending on what you're shooting with your phones, you may have your footage. And I'm just going to kind of demonstrate this. You may have your footage looking like this when you load it into your system. And that's again because we're using different devices and they don't always match up to the HD uh, signal that we're setting up, the ABHD uh, 1080i, 60i. And if that's the case, you come across a shot that looks something like this. All you have to do in your master window, your program window, is double click on the shot. When you double click on the shot, you can see there's borders and kind of icons on each corner. All you got to do is just grab one of those corners and what you're doing is resizing. So you can pull it out and make it full size. Okay? And fit your screen. So don't hesitate to do that, guys. I don't want you to be handing in your video in small little kind of squares. I want you guys to be making your video full screen. Once your edit is done, and that's all you need to do, is just make sure you have the pictures and the NAT sound. All you're then going to do is, again, go up under File. You're going to go to Export. You're going to Export Media, very much like you did in the first semester. We're going to use the format H.264, but under Preset, we are going to go and use high quality 1080p HD. So the exact same settings of different projects that you were handing in in first year in PRD 217. And then under the output name, I'm going to have you guys put in your beat, right? So let's say this was uh, post-secondary, right? So that's basically our slug. So it's post-secondary post voiceover. And since I edited this one, I'm just going to call it Shane McQueen. That's how I want you guys to name your stuff. Slug is your beat that you're working on. VoiceOver is the item that's going to go in the show. We're going to do the voice live by the anchors that are in the studio. And then the person that supplied it, you as the reporter. Okay. Just save that to your desktop. All right. So you hit save. You would then hit export. And it would now begin the exporting of that. You would then have a video file sitting on your desktop uh, once that's all complete. I would then want you guys to take that video file uh, and drop it into my drop folder on the O drive. And remember, with the O drive, you need to be connected to the VPN. So make sure you're connected. Then you would just go into the O drive. You would find 
uh, and get to the RTBN. You'd go through all the stages there we've talked about before. You'd look for my folder, and then you would just drag and drop it into the drop folder. You're not going to be able to open up the drop folder. You're just going to be able to drag that particular item, that video, into it. Okay, And it should have a dialog box giving you, you know, 10 seconds, 15, 20 seconds, however long it should take to drop in. All right, so just a quick little tutorial. This is what we were going to do in class last week. I just wanted to put something to video because we're going to be doing proficiencies over the next three classes, and I want you to have something to um, work with when you put together your voiceovers for the 12th. All right, and those are going to be due at 2 p.m. on uh, during class time on uh, Friday, April 12th, before we head off on Reading Week. Okay? Thank you very much, you guys. Um, and this will be up on YouTube. I'll be sending out a link uh, to everybody in an email um, very soon. Thank you.